Welcome into the latest edition then of Extra Time. Pretty in pink. Stevie Nickel with us, as is uh, Don Hutchinson. Boys, let's start with Real Madrid. Uh, were they too late to buy Eden Hazard? He's already 29, had a season full of injury and might only have two to three years left at his best. Don, what do you think? Um, I think only in hindsight. No one knew that he was going to pick up this injury and struggle. Um, Listen, he tried to stay on at Chelsea for as long as possible. He's done a wonderful job at Chelsea in the Premier League. He has been a superstar. So maybe you could argue that he could have went there a season earlier. But as I said before, you know, I think he'll still come good. And he'll have more than two or three years. I'm pretty sure at 29 players are now going into the peak in and around 31, 32. So there's a good three or four years in Hazard just yet. Stephen? Yeah, I think it's easy to, to turn around and ask that question now because of the horrendous season he had last year, um, mainly because of injury uh, and lack of fitness. But, I mean, when they bought him, he was arguably the most sought-after midfielder that was available on the planet. You know, when we were thinking about Belgium winning the World Cup, we were thinking the only way they win it is if this guy turns it on. So. I think it's dead easy in hindsight to say, to ask that question after such a bad year last year, but there's no question, the guy's, the guy's talented and I'll be shocked if he doesn't come back and shows us exactly what he's made of. Uh, meanwhile, Don, this may have happened to you considering your long list of clubs. If you scored against your former club, would you celebrate? Did you celebrate? Uh, I would. I think I would. I think I'd, I think I'd give it to the fans, I think. Depending on, depending on who, uh, no, actually, I think I just would. I just think it's in my nature. I just think I'd, before the game, I'd go, try and play it cool, Don, play it cool. Then once you score, you, I, I never knew what I was doing. I wasn't a good planner. I wasn't a good um, celebrator of goals. I just used to let loose and go mad. So I'm pretty sure I probably would. Stevie, would you have scored against, would you have uh, celebrated against Liverpool? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Listen, you got, at the end of the day, You've got to look after your own fans. I mean, if I'm a, if I'm a fan of, of Sheffield Wednesday, for example, and my player scores against Liverpool and doesn't even celebrate, I'm going to ask questions. So, yeah, I think I think a, a little bit of me was the same as Don. You know, you're not quite sure what you're going to do. All these planned celebrations, in, in my opinion, do my head in. So, uh, yeah, I would absolutely have celebrated in, in, some, in some sort of fashion, no question. Who scored more goals between you two? Don, how many goals did you get? Oh, no idea. I wouldn't I wouldn't know. I've no oh, idea. Oh, because we did the quiz. We, what your quiz at 47, was it Stevie? 46? I'm trying to remember. 46. 46. 47, that. Yeah, 46. Yeah. He might. What do you reckon? Over nick or under, it. Don? The goal getter oh. nickel might nick it. <laughs> <laughs> Don, in the light of the comments by Rooney yesterday, of course, writing his column about Ravel Morrison, uh, is there any player you played with that never reached the potential that their talent suggested um, can include a player that you coached, Stevie? But let's start with you, Don. Um, I'm just trying to think. There was, uh, and Stevie might be able to help me out on the guy's name. Liverpool signed uh, a young boy from Oldham, um, and he Harrison. came in, and he was meant to be unreal. And it was my first couple of years at Liverpool, and I'd heard all the hype about him. Was it Wayne, Wayne Harrison? Was it Wayne Harrison, Wayne Harrison. Don? Yeah, Wayne Harrison was his name. And he was meant to be incredible. He was meant to be the new Kenny. He was meant to be sensational. And he tore his cruise shirt in his first or second season at Liverpool. It was just as I arrived and I seen him go through his rehab. Uh, and he never he never got back to, to anywhere near the standards that he was at, obviously, before and could have then went on. So there's been plenty through the years, but I think I'd have to lean towards Wayne Harrison being the one that was really, really unlucky, snapping his cruise shirt, you know, in the early 90s when the, the physiotherapy weren't as good as what it is now and unfortunately he never got back. Stevie? You know, I can't I can't think of any I can't think of anybody. To be honest with you. Right then, let's move on then. I never took uh, that with much. The sports science I never took that much notice. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not gonna force you, Stevie. <laughs> no, nobody. Uh, with the sport, with the sport, with the sports science oh, available, no, I've just lost me, mate. Oh, my. I can't hear you. Okay, I'll go to Don first. With the sports science available today, would the guys think they would be much better player than they were previously? Don, what do you think? Uh, 
Not really, no. I mean, my problems came off the pitch. I enjoyed my, my, my time off the pitch far too much. So that was that was known at the time. It was a given. Um, I didn't indulge when I shouldn't. I just done it too much. I'd done it on a Saturday night. I'd done it in midweek. Um, but it wouldn't have made me a better player. I, I played till I was 37. So when I was finishing my, I was finishing because of knee injuries. I had five knee operations inside five years. Uh, the clubs didn't know that I was going to have my operations. I paid for them myself. As soon as the season finished, I used to fly out to Colorado and see Dr. Stedman. He'd go in my knee, give me a little clean out right back for pre-season. And I carried that on for five years. And I think 37 is not a bad inning. So I wouldn't have thought they would have got too much more out of me. Uh, Stevie, the question about sports science and if they had the sports science that they do now back in your day, would it have improved you as a player? No. No, it wouldn't have made any difference to, to anybody as a player. You know, the sports science now is it's, it's to do with the fitness. It's, it's not to do with the ability of any player. It's about keeping them in a certain shape, keeping them absolutely at their peak as often as they can or for as, as long as they can. Um, so it, it wouldn't make any difference to your ability or, or your ability to get better uh, on the field of play. It would just, I mean, obviously it would make you fitter and stronger, but you know, you don't forget, you know, back, back when, I was, when I was playing, there was no such thing, but everybody was kind of in the same, had the same sort of fitness. Every team trained pretty much the same, so, you know, Don was the same, you know. It probably it was just starting when Don when Don came along, but then every team came and came and started all that stuff at the same time. So you were just on a level par with all the other teams and all the other players. So it would have absolutely nothing to do with making you a better football player. Are you happy that you got to play then, Stevie? Where it was fine to have the diet that you had, and obviously uh, the drinks that you had and the crisps that you had. You know, it's a very difficult question to answer that, you know, because that that was normal for us. And we got to go out and enjoy ourselves, you know. But mm. the guys today, you know, they're used to a certain lifestyle and, and I'm sure they think that's normal. So maybe they're quite happy with it. I just wouldn't have fancied it. Um, there's absolutely no way the guys today had as much fun and, and as good a time as we did. Absolutely nowhere near. But then, you know, you, you, you can't do what we used to do today. Um, so I actually feel bad for them. You know, there's there's lots of things that they'll miss out on. You know, when, when you, you go around today and you have all these gentlemen's dinners, there are so many ex-professionals who are standing up telling stories, all the different things that happened. I mean, mm. what are these guys going to talk about? You know, yeah. well, the fastest their time memoirs I got won't be as interesting as yours. Between Steve. the house was a bit. Sorry, their, their book will not be as interesting as yours is. Oh, God. oh, well, there won't be many pages in their book. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's that'd be sparse. Um, ask Stevie just for once. <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't for Heisel, how do you think your Liverpool side of eighty-seven, ninety would have fared against the great Milan team? We would have given anybody a game. I'm telling you, absolutely anybody a game. I actually, I actually played golf with Marco Van Basten a few years ago, and I said that very thing Woo! to him. I said, you know what? Hello. I said, uh, I said, you know, I, I'm not going to turn around and say that we would have beat your team because they're a fantastic team. I said, I'll tell you what, though. It would have been one hell of a game because we had a proper team just like them so unfortunately it's a guessing game but no question we would have given them a game big time don the neutral robbed have not been able to see those battles yeah i mean they were the standout sides weren't they liverpool uh, in the in the in the 80s were sensational alongside you know that milan side were just terrific um there were some sides in europe that had legendary status. Uh, Liverpool certainly had that in Stevie's day. Milan had it for a while. I think Juve and Inter both had it. Um, and it's such a shame that it, it that those two sides weren't pitted together. But you'll never know, and that's probably the beauty of it. You know, it's nice to try and think who would have come out on top, but you never know. 
Um, and that sometimes is the best way, uh, just because it, it, it just leaves that, that gap in your mind where you could actually see it going either way. It would have just been an absolute goal fest, I'm pretty sure. And it would have been a wonderful game. Who's the most pa famous person you've played golf with, Don? Fame? Well, uh, I mean, I haven't got a, 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 a clientele like Van Basten that Stevie had. I couldn't drop as many names there. But my local golf club, um, we have Teddy Sheridan. We have Ray Houghton. We have Steve Lomas and John Moncur. So it's not bad, but it's not Van Basten. Who was the best midfielder in their prime, Don? SCN, Petit or Ballack? Oh, I've got a soft spot for Petit. I, I liked Manu. Um, SEM was just sensational and, you know, is a, is a midfield play. He had an engine on him like no other. Um, Balak, I, I always imagined in my imagination that Balak was a 10. He wasn't an 8. So Manu had something about him and I played against him many a time and he could kick you. He could outplay you. He was graceful. He was elegant on the ball. Um, Travelled with the ball very easy. Nothing was a stretch for him. Uh, and and I'm, listen, I might be in the massive minority, but I, I would I, I would go for Manu. Uh, Stevie, are you allowed to call him Manu? Not amongst as well? those two, Don. I absolutely. I'm going with Petit. Yeah, I mean it's hard to add anything to what Don said there, but yeah, for me, for me, Petit, probably Balik. The only difference between Petit and Bali, Bali would be a better finisher, but after that, every other department, I'm going with Petit. Final question, will Stevie ever grow a moustache like Don? Hmm. <laughs> oh, has Don got a moustache? I can't see him. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? Oh. It would, it would take too long for me to grow a moustache, and you wouldn't be able to see it either. It'd be a wee flimsy daft thing. So, no, it's not happening. You played with some great moustaches, legends of the moustache game, Stevie. Yeah. Oh, what, what a moustache Sooness has, eh? <laughs> Absolute <laughs> belter. Sooness, Rushy, Aldo, John Aldridge had the classic. Oh, Aldo, you can, uh, sorry, you couldn't call Rushy's a moustache. <laughs> that was like a... True. Would you call one of the? Would you call one of the furry insects that can grow across the top of your lip? Uh, a centipede, a caterpillar. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. That is it, then, boys. Thank you very much, as always. Uh, thank you, Stevie and Don. We'll be back tomorrow for more. Thanks for your tweets. Until then, goodbye. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.